how does your primary function mentally? What are the thoughts we have about our primary function and finances? And I'll go back to that thing where, because I believed housewives are lazy, they're not smart and so on and so forth. Then I believed that I'm not able to, um, to be, I'm not smart enough to make money, manage money and so on and so forth, right? So that's something I also want to, to let people understand. Yeah, you think it's not enough. Why do you think it's not enough? Is it because you think you don't have the ability to take what you have and make more? Do you understand what I mean? So a lot of people give us those short answers. I want to make money. Why do you want to make money? So that I can eat in good, you know, great restaurants. Why do you want to eat in great restaurants? So that, you know, people can see me there. Why do you want people to see you there? Or oh, so that they can know that I'm also upper class. Why do you care that, people, you know, the questions come back to that state of mind. If you're doing one, two, three to be seen doing it, what is your mental health? You're lacking that confidence to just be okay. You don't need more money. You need to know that you're important enough where you are without the money. It's not the eating in the posh restaurants that make you someone. You need to write down the life experiences that you want to have. This has nothing to do with the work that you need to do to get those experiences. It has nothing to do with money. The words I kept hearing were, well, housewives are lazy, you know. I mean, they're not intelligent. That's why they can't even get a job to go to work. They're not ambitious. And that was my state of mind when I came to Centonomy. And at that point, my primary function hadn't and the effect it had on finances was that, well, housewives don't handle money. We don't make money. Therefore, who are we to think about money and what to do with it? Do you know what I mean? It was something that I always thought was dictated by the one who makes the money in the house. And that was my husband. So when I came to St. John, I was really low. I was down. I was like, I feel like I'm going to be the joke of the class. Um, because I'm the one least like who lacks, <laughs> I don't even have a shilling. I'm a housewife, you know, I don't have a job. So what am I coming to do? And I dreaded the introduction part. I kept thinking, oh God, people are going to say how they own businesses, you know, they work in this place and that place. And I'm just going to be like, well, I'm a housewife. I cook and I clean and I take care of my kids. <laughs> do you know that, that feeling? And the first thing that happened is when we entered into the class, you know, we were told to define wealth. And for me at that point, wealth really was tied to finance. Wealth was money. That was it. That's how I thought about it. But when we got to that class, the question was posed and we st I started to really think about wealth, right? And when I took time to think about wealth, it was different to me. So what kind of conversations are you choosing to get involved in? Yeah. And I like what if you said, yes, to realize. And you know, part of choosing yourself is accepting where you are right now. Yes, I'm a corporate woman. Yes, I'm a housewife or a mother or a, or a sister. But these are the choices before me. And even as I work through these choices, I will make sure I choose them intentionally and understanding why I must be very intentional about those choices. We are a multi-dimensional human being. Like you can do so many other things. It's not just being a wife. It's not just being um, a corporate woman. It's not just being an entrepreneur. There's so many things that you can do as an individual. God has given us so many abilities that if we thought about them seriously, there's a lot of value that we can do. And unless we understand that, we realize that we'll be operating at a very uh, minimal potential. If you do not understand who you are, you'll end up making the wrong choices, number one. Number two, you will never choose yourself. Number three, you will not give yourself fully. And one of the things that autonomy program does is liberate you as a woman, it gives you the power to make the choices that you need to make. When I started this company, Centonomy, Everybody talks about starting a business and, and saying that 
entrepreneurs, you've started a business, you should be fearless, you should be focused, you should be passionate, you, can, you should be determined all the time. Yeah? So guess when I found myself like this, I felt alone, I felt like I was doing the wrong thing, I felt I had no value. Being in a positive state of mind, just being able to understand that you are mentally able, it is so important. Centonomy 101 was created in moments like that, of just getting up and believing I am mentally able. First of all, whatever support you need, give yourself permission. I'm standing here 13 years later and I still have moments of being in bed and dealing with it in different ways. Some days it's just I need a day on the couch to watch TV. And some days I need, I've gone through therapies, I've talked to a counselor, I've talked to personal coaches, life coaches, business coaches, taken training programs. So whatever constitutes your basket of support, do not be apologetic about using it. After all this, we've gone through who you are, you're a creative, you're a writer. We've gone through linking who you are to what you want. Because if you are a listener all the way, the kind of things you will do, like even the kind of things you will invest or want to invest, if you're a creative, will all align to that. We don't all want the same things because we were created differently. And you will find abundance is when you do the things that are aligned to who you are. Have an emergency fund to cover your basic expenses is because life happens. Jobs are lost. People separate. There is death that all sorts of things that impact finances. Dignified existence means there's still a roof over my head. I have food on the table. My kids are going to school, even as I figure out plan B. So if I have a five, three month or a six month emergency fund, at least I have six months to figure it out. I'm not out on the street. Now that 300 Bob, if invested in 20 years, it's 6.2 million shillings, just that 300 Bob. In five years, it's 669, 10 years, it's 1.7, 15 years, 300 Bob a day. That is the money.